Good day. In this video, we are going to take you through your very first setup of an Amazon workspace. If you've never done anything with Amazon Web Services before, this might seem a bit daunting to you because you know how big the company is and how many products they have. But workspaces in particular isn't a problem for newbies or junior techs. So first, what is an Amazon Workspace? Well, they define it as a fully managed desktop virtualization service. Basically, it's a PC in the cloud you can remote into and you can tie back into your corporate network. Let's show you how to set it up. First thing you do is just Google Amazon Workspaces. There you go. And the first hit on Google is shocker Amazon Workspaces. You can read this, but I wouldn't just click get started. Am I a root user or am I a standard uh, sort of mid-level admin? Well, I'm really none of the above. I need to create an account. So let's click on that email address. Yes, it requires complexity. Fill out the obvious fields. Now you do need a credit card, but it's not going to charge you anything unless you go over your free usage tier. code and I'm in what am I looking for well I want to do this for free so this makes it pretty easy to go with the free support bingo our accounts done so go to the console and I want to be root you'll want to be root as well and if you're not sick of entering these yet you will be because they just keep coming up All right, so you might look at this and initially go to, let's go to EC2 and build a virtual machine. That's really for servers and things, not so much for desktops. You can put desktops in there, but it's not really what it's meant for. So what you want to do is go to the waffle in the top and search through the menus, or you can do it the easy way and just do a search, or in my case, in your case, workspaces. We want to select uh, workspaces at the top, get started. Now, if you go into advanced setup, you need to set up your network, which is a little more complicated than you might think because you are required to have two different subnets. So to get through this quickly, just select quick setup and it'll build a directory for you, which by the way is compatible with Active Directory. It'll build the network for you. So you'll have the entire virtual private cloud, the VPC. That's the term that Amazon wants you to know. Let's click launch. What we're looking for here is all the free stuff because don't want to pay. So you can scroll through this, but it's a pretty big list. So the easy thing to do is just click on standard and that won't get you all of the free stuff. There'll be a few extra things in there, but it's a lot less. Now, in addition to this, you've got to decide between PC OIP and WSP. WSP is new and we have this lovely table that we have constructed showing you what the differences are between, well, most people are that are going to be doing this type of work or familiar with Citrix. The difference between the Citrix product, between PC OIP and WSP. Just briefly, PC OIP is cleverly PC over IP and WSP is the new standard, which means workspace streaming protocol. And that's the one you want to use unless you've got some really good reason to not use it like you really need GPU support. And yes, this will have GPU support in the future, but doesn't quite yet. All right, so look through the table, figure out which one you need. Almost everybody's gonna go with WSP for now. When you're selecting this, you wanna select uh, for the purpose of this discussion, the Windows 10 20, Server 2019 base. And that's because that's one that gives you the most realistic Windows 10 experience. Oh, I chose the PC OIP, don't do that. You can, by the way. Uh, in fact, you can even change back and forth with uh, some caveats that you, you lose all the data and things, but it will, it will rebuild it for you. So you can get your images back and forth. Anyway, the bottom line is just choose it correctly to start with. There we go. Now you think you would just click launch workspace, but you have to create a user. AWS test user. And I'm going to use that same email address that I had before because well, it's just easy. Click launch and in a few minutes this will actually be ready so I'm gonna go back to my well let's click view workspaces console as we're sitting here 
Now it says it'll take up to 20 minutes, so I'll stop the video now and then I'll pick it back up. Okay, we're back! Now, if you are if you are looking at the screen and nothing much is happening, just keep clicking the refresh over on the far right hand side here. You can expand it and you can read things like the registration code, which is what's required for connection. But in this case, I've made a mistake. You can see in the top right hand corner, it says N Virginia, that's North Virginia. And if we click the drop down, you'll see they have lots of different regions. And region is just sort of their code for a data center. It's a little more complex than that, but that's the basics of it. So this is where their major data centers are. From my experience, because I'm in Calgary, which is, if you're in the US, it's above Montana. My experience has been that the US West Oregon is actually faster. And regardless of what your previous experience is, it's still worth checking. So how do you check it? Not very hard, just a website. So what you do is just go to a browser and you want to type in clients dot amazon workspaces dot com and you say oh no this is downloads that's correct but you can also click on connection status and this will run a test on all of the different regions that support workspaces and that's another good point not all amazon web services data centers support workspaces so if you're thinking well there's one in houston yeah and why isn't it here well it just isn't so you can see in my case, I really should have been using our friend in Oregon. It's twice as fast as the one in uh, North Virginia for me. Amazon suggests you try to run this a couple of times. So I'll run it twice just because we're here, but I'm going to choose Oregon because that's also been my experience. It's way faster. All right, so let's just go do that again. I'll speed through this so you don't have to sit and wait. Okay, so you can see here it says pending. I know it's been a while, so yeah, available, there it is. I can expand it and get some basic information, but really what I need is the email. A couple of things here. Number one, this email, even though I'm very confident the workspace was ready, as you can see here, the email took more than 20 minutes to come through. And in this Microsoft free Outlook online, it showed up in my junk mail. So that might be an issue for you, but just take note of it. What you have to do, you can read all this, but it's just easier to copy the link. And basically what we need to do here is have our test user, who is AWS test user. They need two things to connect. One, they need this registration code. And secondly, they need to have a password. So copy the link, paste it in. Hey, what's your password? I'll set my password. Update user. There we go. Now I'm set up. What I want to do is I want to connect to this box, right? So you download the 64-bit client. You can install it in just a few seconds. It's a click next install. You can see I already have it installed, so I'm not going to bother. But just trust me, it's a click next install. And there it is, Amazon Workspaces. Click on it. It takes longer to come up than you would expect. At least it does for me. There we go. Now I need the registration code. Well, where's the registration code? Well, as the administrator, you've got it right there. The user, however, will get it right here. So just copy and paste it. Copy and paste, click register. Again, this the first time in takes longer than you would expect. So I'll skip some time here. There it is. My user. And I'll type my password in. I could select keep me logged in, but I'm not going to do that. You may want to. And it says launching workspace. Now, the first time in, this will take a bit. Let's show you around. Uh, the first thing is task manager. Let's just zip through this and you'll see, boom, you've got the two cores that you were not paying for because this is free and the eight gig of RAM, get rid of that. The disk space is something that is not obvious. So let's just go look at your this PC and you'll notice there's no C drive. Oh no, what to do? Uh, it's there, but they don't want users goofing with it. So you have to type it in, C colon backslash, and there it is. You can drill through here. You can still turn on and I highly recommend you do at least file name extensions. I still to this day don't understand why Microsoft removed it in uh, about 2000, I think it's a huge mistake. File name extension should be on, a big security risk. I also like hidden items on, but I understand most people don't, but there we go. And then let's look at the user profile and there's virtually nothing there. 
We'll go through some of the administration and some of the backend stuff in a second, but I want to very quickly show you that you can install pretty much anything you want. The two things I'm going to install right now are Office and OneDrive. So I'm just launching the browser. It defaults with uh, Firefox and Internet Explorer. Why IE is still there, I don't know. It's obviously something Amazon's done to, well, most likely to kind of screw over Microsoft because Edge is excellent. And if you don't know, Microsoft Edge is Chromium. There, yes, that took all of that time to come up. It is very slow the first time. First thing I want to do is go to portal.office.com. And uh, I'm going to sign in with my actual personal account here. So I'm going to skip this so you can't see it. Now I'm going to install Office. And set it up. And I will speed through this. You don't have to sit and wait because I'm just trying to prove the point that you can customize this as you need. So I'm going to do the uh, task bar settings and I'm going to fix a couple of things. I hate combine, so I'll turn that off. I think it's a performance killer. Leave that alone. Uh, it's also important to go to Windows Update and uh, do an update. While we're here, let's explain how updates work. Uh, you can force them yourself and there are settings to uh, tweak them. A competing technology for OneDrive is this icon here, Amazon Work Docs. Uh, if you don't know what it is, you can Google it, but it's basically the same thing. I'm gonna sign in just to show you that this works. Uh, now here's an interesting little problem. So what happens is Internet Explorer is running in protected mode first thing is to, well, first get rid of it. So let's go to default apps. Uh, I would again download our friend, Mr. Edge, but uh, Firefox is already here, so that's just fine. The second thing I would do is run server manager. And you think, how does it have server manager? It's Windows 10. No, it's not server 2019, just with the Windows 10 skin. Uh, wait for it to populate, click on local server, and in IE, Enhanced Security, uh, set that to off. There it is. I'll turn it off because it pretty much makes it unusable. So let's get rid of that. I don't need that anymore. And now let's do the OneDrive setup again. And let's see. Yeah, okay, so it just came down here. So double click on it to bring it up. Sign in and it'll launch the wizard again. Okay, I'll cut this. So there you go. You can see it is transferring 25,000 files. Uh, what, well, in fact, it's actually not transferring any files. It's transferring a bunch of shortcuts. I'll just click next to finish this off. Yep, there is my documents populating now. All right, so you get the idea. What else can users do? Well, they can uh, click on settings and we'll show you how to turn these on and off, but uh, in settings, a user can actually get more disk or they can get more CPU. And yep, that'll cost more money. As soon as they click update, you'll notice down here, changing compute will uh, change how much your company pays. Yeah, it's not good. So you probably want to turn that off, but that's where it is by default. Good for labs and things, I suppose, but that's about all. They can also rebuild their workspace. Now, if they rebuild their workspace, which again is on by default, you'll find that what actually is happening is the Customizations will get wiped out. Oh, they're basically the user profile is gone. That's not good. Same thing with increased disk size. You get the idea here. I'm not going to spend more time on this. Uh, something that's really helpful though is enter full screen on all displays. So let me just show you that. I'm going to click on it. Now, you're not going to be able to see this. I appreciate because, well, you're only looking at one screen. However, I can tell you I'm on a 1080p screen that you're looking at and I also have a 4K screen connected to it and it has properly scaled them. Uh, so I'm able to see full screen, both screens at full resolution, very slick. Now to get out of this, you move your, your mouse to the top and click view and click leave full screen and it'll change it back. Okay, so obviously having my personal files on here is a terrible idea if you're trying to build an image, but you get the idea that, that you would install whatever you want on the machine and it will work. Watch this, I can click start. I'll just click Word just quickly to prove the point that, yep, it started up. I can bail out of this. But you get the idea that it's uh, 
ready to go. Now, there are some licensing issues there. Amazon, I believe, tells you that you are required to have special licensing to run, in particular, Microsoft Office in workspaces. However, this will change over time, so I suggest you check with your local Microsoft rep to find out what the current legal status is of your licenses. Okay, let's go build an image. And the way we're going to do this is firstly to restart this. I'm just gonna right click and restart. Let's quickly go through a few of the uh, settings that are on this screen before we get into the more interesting things. Select the workspace. Only one, the workspace is tied to the users. You can't reassign this to somebody else, just to be clear about that. Let's now click on actions at the top right hand corner. I can edit this user, but I can't really do much, right? I can change the name, so on and so forth. I can invite a user. I can reboot the workspace. I can stop it. I can rebuild it or I can restore it. Now, this is interesting. These workspaces by default are backed up. Uh, well, they're snapshotted every 12 hours. So if I go into rebuild and it's been more than 12 hours, I will be able to see the previous restore point, which is awesome. Remove uh, lets me, you know, shut it down permanently modify let's go into modify and this is you know changing the compute type and so on and so forth migrate workspaces this is if you okay that's weird that it errored out oh it hasn't had a snapshot yet so we can't do it okay cool in my case this is running wsp right here and i can change to pc over ip uh, protocol if i want but i'm not going to do that i just could all right let's quickly run through these other uh, options so directories yes that's active directory and this is the simple Active Directory. I'll put up at the bottom here, the other kinds, but it boils down to, you can either use Amazon's simple Active Directory, which is compatible with, with real Microsoft Active Directory. You can also put a link in called a connector to have your users sign in using their current corporate Active Directory credentials without having anything stored in Amazon. The problem with that is a bit slower. And if you go down or the connector goes down, they're not signing in, so that's an issue. And the third way is to set up a full Active Directory inside Amazon and set up a trust between your on-prem and the Amazon Microsoft Active Directory. So if you want to manage your Active Directory, you can do it using standard RSAT tools. If you have either the Amazon Microsoft Active Directory or you have the Amazon Simple Directory. So let's show you how to do that. Remember that you're actually working on Server 2019, not Windows 10. So what you've got to do is go through Server Manager. And sure, that's lovely. Let's go to Manage, Add Roles, Next. Yes, Role-Based, yes, this server. And then skip to Features. And then look for RSAT, Remote Server Admin Tools. Click on that. Yes, it needs some IIS as well. That's just ducky. Click next. And hey, we're going to have to make this change. Yep, got it. Yep, that's just fine. The defaults are happy. And install. And this will take a minute. Bingo. Close. Let's go to users and computers. Look familiar? Now, something that's really important, if you're running a domain with more than four or five workspaces, Amazon tells you, you really shouldn't be managing it this way. You really should be running your Active Directory management tools on an EC2 platform. We're not gonna install this, but we'll show you what that, what that actually is. So let's go to your workspaces. Again, you can click through services and go find it, or you can just type in EC2, there it is and it correctly says it's virtual servers in the cloud. This is your, instead of VDI being, you know, desktop virtualization, it's actually running proper Windows server that you can run your Active Directory tools on. That's what they suggest. And if you've never done that before, it's really easy. Just go to instances, click launch instances, what kind do you want? Let's go to Windows and you can see eligible for free tier so you can still keep it nice and cheap. But this is beyond the scope of this particular course. So I'll put a link in the top right hand corner when we get around to doing our EC2 bootcamp. All right, let's leave that. Okay, now the only thing I wanna show you before I bail out of this is that this defaults to a very old functional level. 
go to race functional level, and you can see it's a 2008 R2. There's no changes to FISMOs once you get to, what is it, uh, 2016? I think 19 and 2022 have no changes to the schema, but that's pretty old, and you may find things are not happy with it. And just because we're here, let's look at the FISMOs. So you can see there's your RID, your primary domain controller, infrastructure controllers. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the regular stuff. Workspaces moving over, bundles. Bundles are your operating system with your hardware combined. So it's the corporate image that we're about to show you along with the hardware. And this makes it easy to deploy. Images, we don't have any yet, but we will in a minute. IP access controls, pretty important. As it stands right now, anybody that has a username and password and this code, they would be able to sign in. Not the most secure. You may want to go into IP access controls and create an IP group to lock it down a bit more. Account settings, nothing really exciting there. Applications, these are all things that require additional setup. Let's go take a look at your, well, in this case, my uh, virtual private cloud. So click start and I can either hunt through for it or I can just type in VPC. It's just a lot easier to type stuff in. And you can see the VPCs that I have, but this is all built automatically. These are the subnets. So let's go into my US West Oregon. Just look at the subnet. Riveting, huh? Okay, now here's something that you will wanna know. Uh, in the, the VPC, you can see that there are site-to-site uh, -site VPN connections, and that may be how you connect your Active Directory with Amazon. You're gonna to wanna to do that securely through a VPN. You can also do it through a direct connection. But another thing you wanna play with is the network ACLs, the access control lists. All right, there may be settings in here you wanna put in. So it's effectively just a firewall. Now let's go look at the directory service. So again, I can click the waffle or I can just type in directory service and you'll see where that takes us into our directory. Yes, we're going through this very quickly. Now, if I click on the icon in the top left-hand corner, I'll go to console home and you'll see it comes up with where I've recently been as well as every service known to man. These get added to all the time. Let's go back to workspaces and let's build an image. So I'm going to back to the login page. I'm going to sign in. I'll speed this up so you don't have to sit and get old. Just for fun, let's go into personalize and we'll get rid of this background just to make it a little more friendly for users. That's what I want to take an image of. Got Office installed. I could install other apps. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna press the X and close this. Yes, I do wanna end the current session. There it goes, disconnecting. So to create an image, click Actions, Create Image, and you're supposed to go to, well, let's just do it. Let's go to that, go to the machine, we'll run the image checker. Let's grab that path, copy, go into here, let's close this down. and run the image checker. Run. It's very fast, normally. <laughs> well, that's a big surprise. Good thing we ran the check. Let's go to storage checker. It has enough space. What it's worried about is, I think, my OneDrive stuff. Yeah, okay. The stupid idea to try to image something with OneDrive already on it. Okay, I'm going to remove that and I'll run the check again and I won't waste your time watching it. Yeah, there we go. Yay! Okay, I'll run through that great image again. So what we have to do is close this. Yes, I want to end the session. Wait for it to finish. 
Click next. All right, so we'll call this UR Tech Gold December, or January 2022. Doesn't like spaces, by the way, or most other special characters. So I'm just gonna click on that. And this is going to take, uh, there you go. Yeah, it says 45 minutes. And I think that's you know, not so far off what it will actually take. Uh, you can click on images if you want to see what it's doing. And it's pending. Okay, so we'll wait. All right, while we're waiting for that to complete, let's show you how to control, basically set GPOs. So go to directory, click the uh, select it, because you may have more than one, so you'd need to select it, then select actions and select update details. This is where you get into the controls to stop people from expanding their drive space or blocking access to the internet. You know, yeah, you can just boom, turn that off. Pretty straightforward. Maintenance mode. But really self-service. This is where you're really going to want to focus. Yeah. Don't want users adding more disk by themselves. Don't want users adding more compute. And really don't want users setting the running mode. So let me explain what that is. The running mode. Here, I'll just, I'll actually do the click update now. I'll just get that done. There we go. So it's that instant. So when you go into workspaces, you'll see the running mode is set to auto stop. That means after one hour of non-use, it will turn itself off. That means that Amazon by default will do the patching for you of the operating system, at least. And it also keeps your costs down, but your users could go in and change their running mode. Just a little checkbox. Uh, once, once this is signed in, just a little checkbox for them that says, yeah, change the running mode to always on. And wow, that's going to increase your bill quite a lot. Amazon would love it, but you will not. A couple of other things to note are number one, your region. You've got to decide where to run these machines. So if these machines, these desktops need to be close to the data, you better put them in whatever geography, whatever region is close to where your data is. If the users need very fast response times, well, you better do what we showed you already and put it close to where they are. And if both of those things are required, well, you're in trouble. Something else, if you go into here and you remove the workspace, it isn't recoverable. It's not like Microsoft. You can't get it back. Once it's gone, it's gone. And two other things that are really important, if, you know, for large scale deployments. There's an Amazon command line for this, an AWS command line, and it also works with PowerShell. That's beyond the scope of this class, but you can do it. And not you can like it's some crazy hard thing to do. It's normal. Okay, we'll wait until this uh, image is done. Let's just take a quick look. I don't think it's been near enough time. No, it still says pending, so we wait. Okie dokie. So our, our gold image is ready to go. And he's ready to go for what? Well, because we're going to build a bundle. Click on it and select actions. And yeah, you've got copy image. You can use copy image if you want to take this configuration and move it to a different region. That's really where this is helpful. But I'm going to create a bundle. Now, as you can see here, a bundle is the operating system, better known as the image, the settings that we've set, the application software, plus the actual hardware, storage, and the compute. That all makes a bundle. Let's do one. So let's uh, go into here and we'll call this, uh, yeah, I'm going to call it Ian Test. Sure, why not? And description, I'll call this uh, Base Bundle Test. It doesn't make a difference what you call it. Now, you might recall I said, you know, what kind of hardware is it? Well, here we go. I'm going to use the standard two CPU, four gig, and I wanted to use the base amount of a disk. Actually, I don't because I can actually get that for free still. I know that that is a still a free uh, package. So I'll go to that and I'll click create bundle. Oh, and it doesn't like the space. So let's go get rid of that, create, and let's go to bundles. And there it is. And now I could use this to deploy more workspaces so I can now click on launch workspace in the top right hand corner and I could say yep I want it to be part of the existing active directory and I create more users here so on and so forth I'm going to click cancel because well I don't want to do that <laughs> now let's show you how to delete this stuff because well maybe you don't want it anymore so the image I don't need this image anymore so I'll click on it and I'll select delete and it says oh it's associated you can't get rid of it yet that's correct so go to bundle get rid of the bundle associated with images get rid of that there we go now you don't have to a lot of people will have dozens of these in here but they're just garbage for the sake of this test so i'm getting rid of them just to eh, just good digital hygiene now you notice that this uh, machine that i had 
uh, for the AWS user is stopped. So I, if I wanted to use it now, I would go in and I would uh, start it up. So uh, easy enough to do. Uh, just uh, select it, select actions and start workspace. I don't want to do that, but I could. So I think that's all for our Amazon Workspaces Zero to Hero Bootcamp. You know, that gets you through the basics that gets you uh, started and you should be able to play from here. Now, if you found this video useful, we'd really appreciate it if you'd click like. It's very helpful to the Google algorithm. Subscribe is also appreciated. We'll be doing another one on the Microsoft 365 VDI, you know, virtual desktop infrastructure very shortly. And if you click subscribe, you'd get that all for free, of course. If you have any questions, just put them in the comment section below. We'll get back to you or somebody else will. And you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.